presence here in the LPL. There you go, insta lock in for Nani. Definitely something they can play through. Definitely something they can set Nani up to be the primary carry for the team. Now over to OMG where they want to go with their lock ins. They're hovering the Orn. I'd be very surprised to see the top lane matchup locked in when there are so many priority picks available. Instead, looking towards the jungle, you can pick things like your AD carry, things like your support as well early on and, and feel very safe. Yeah, both the Varus and Ezreal still left open. We haven't seen Abel opt into either pick just yet, but bo both available, right? And I think both perform pretty decently into something like their Renekton to where obviously with the Ezreal you have the Arcane Shift with various of the Chains of Corruption but OMG wanting to go back to that style that we talked about where even on blue side in their first matchup they first picked Thresh on blue and they were much happier putting Abel onto a hyper carry like Aphelios and going into the late game with you know strong team fight potential. Yeah, having that uh, that Thresh to be able to set up a hyper carry, make sure they have the mobility. I wasn't sure if they Ooh. were going to do it, but the Diana is there for Shun. This is something that has been a terror in solo queue, but not something we've seen on the professional stage much. So I'm excited to see what Shun can bring with this jungle Diana. Yeah, and I was listening to Selfmade's thoughts of it on stream that, you know, he equated it very much to AP Graves in the sense that you don't really bring too much to a team. You don't bring too much early on. You are just this, this champion that brings a ton of burst into team fights, and you are setting yourself to be uh, one of the main carries on the team. We know Shun, I think, has performed mainly well on AP champions. Obviously, his best champion by far is the Nidalee, which is why OMG did take that one away. So we're going to get to see his hand tried out on this one. You also do have setup coming out, right? You have Chains of Corruption on your AD carry already. You have Slice and Dice or Flash done on Renekton. And then Shun's going to be set up to do well. The thing is, OMG going right into that. Aphelios loves champions running into him. So going to be very happy playing against uh, Diana and Renekton on the opposite side. Look, all I'm saying is a lot of lunar action going on in this game. I'd love to see a Warwick come out just to keep with the theme of the werewolf stepping forward. It's going to be Nautilus and Lucian Band as I return to reality here. And Akali and Orn taken off of the board. So two champions that both Cream and New are very, very comfortable on. Still plenty of options when it comes to the safe top laners. Something like the Volibear could be an answer to the Renekton. Yeah, Volibear and Gnar are the first two that jump to mind, right? Because you expect them to just want a generic frontline champion in that role. If they do go with the Jace, it would play into the style of, hey, we're kiting back. And that's overall what OMG's team composition is going to do, right? It's like, hey, we want more frontline. We want more range. We want you running into us. And we're going to play out through that style. But ultimately, New is going to go with, I'd say, the, the safer and less volatile matchup of just going straight towards that Volibear. Rookie Ghost for the Rise wants to have a hyper carry, wants to be able to make those creative plays with the Realm Warp. And then Leona going to be locked in for Lucas alongside that Varus. Now, it's important to quickly mention that down on that bottom side of the map, there is a massive amount of kill threat at the level six mark with Varus and any hard CC support. Huge amount of opportunity to make things happen there. Let's see what Cream locks in though. His Akali was banned away. He's not running the Silas for himself. Yeah, and this was his other go-to champion, right? Like I said, Akali and Silas are typically what you would think of Cream for. He had exceptional pop-off games on both of these picks. And when I look at both compositions, right, OMG's has that clear identity that we talked about. You're pretty much setting up to peel for the Aphelios later on once he does hit those item breakpoints. You want to get to a point where hopefully you can be on objectives first. You force them to come into you, so on and so forth. I think IG's comp is a bit interesting because even the Rise pickup, right? As an Aphelios, you feel completely fine playing against the Rise in team fights. So you would expect, hey, they picked Rise, they have Renekton, they want to play through side lanes, they want to pull the enemy apart, they want to try and get numbers advantage to find picks. But I also feel like that kind of goes against the play style of, of Diana, where you'd prefer these fights so you can mm -hmm. get in maybe on a flank angle, maybe have the CC to set you up, and then you can just burst out the enemy carry. So I think a, a bit of a disconnect, but still going to have some kill threat. And then if you do find that tempo with your side lane push, you can turn those into skirmishes where then the Diana is able to shine. It's worth mentioning that Diana is still going to do well even if you're not onto all five targets with your ultimate you still one shot people so even if it's a couple of people being able to realm warp the diana towards the carries is definitely a big bonus for diana to be able to close that gap so i can i can see worlds where this can work and certainly with rookies rise you can expect 
a lot of cool plays and also being able to do things like rushing the baron or making your way over to drake using that realm warp to surprise your enemy have the extra rotational power for yourself but whether or not we see that is a different matter i'm seeing a cold side in the audience which is which is nice to see cold going on the thresh this game alongside abel you expect them to play very very safe towards that bottom side but i have to say going into this one my eyes are on the jungle matchup aki going with the the Ude, the standard but shun on this diana we do have an ap jungler with an ad top laner renekton very good at setting up to be ganked early on i've been going back to the cold point about the sign right cold's been around for a long time cold has played in the lpl since 2015 summer i think a lot of people are going to remember his name used to be five so back in those days i remember cold's recon quite vividly played against him at Rift Rivals when I was coaching in the LMS, and OMG were one of the strongest teams in the LPL, so, you know, he's, he's a player who has a lot of experience behind him, and yeah. clearly a ton of fans. I, I love that, I love that we, we noticed the code sign in the audience and started talking about that. Clearly the guys at the, at the Chinese production side noticed as well, because the cameraman went back to that code sign to put it in the lower corner during the Jios, so... It's nice to see a player that has been around for such a long time. Um, it's kind of not necessarily always been in the limelight. Still has his own little fan base and still has people that are, are gunning for a win for him. And right now he's on the cusp, right? 1-0 for OMG. And I don't think many people would have expected that that was going to be the case this morning. I don't think many people were going to be touting OMG as a favorite coming into this matchup as rookie. Interestingly, starting with Rune Prison at level one on the rise. Yeah, uh, a bit curious to see, usually in this matchup, uh, from, you know, players are watching solo queue, uh, other players in pro play, you do start the, the spell flux just for, again, uh, faster wave push ability to trade early on, but going to go with that summoner. Has done a good job of chunking cream out early on. This is a matchup where, you know, first few levels, Rise does have range advantage, is able to take a lot of these aggressive trades, play in his wave to where Cream isn't able to find that abscond abduct to connect onto him. And Silas comes into the matchup later on where Rice doesn't really have the the burst or DPS to take you out until he does scale up with a few items under his belt. So Rookie coming into this game strong so far, not only checking out Cream, but also forcing him to use a lot of resources with, uh, you know, whittling down his mana bar as well. Yeah, it does feel like this is going to be a bit of a test this game for Cream on how well he's going to be able to survive against Rookie. On one of these champions that can bully very aggressively, it felt like the last laning phase, it was neither Rookie nor Cream favored in terms of champions, right? It felt like a fairly even. We both sort of want to farm up. Neither of us wants to all in right now. Whereas Cream definitely at the disadvantage in the early stages, as you say. So we'll see how he's going to be able to do up against the fabled rookie lane bully. But my eyes are also looking towards this bottom side where we've got Wink once again on a bit of a hyper carry. But this time he's going to be going for that lethality build. You can see he's actually started with a long sword there. Has the Halo Blades. These are all telltale signs that he will go pure lethality. Will have a huge amount of damage on his abilities, but doesn't have that same sustained damage in a team fight. And we did see both junglers just path up to their strong sides. Of course, we do know that Nani did help leash for new, so that let new get that strong level one. As we get a replay on the bottom side of how Cold was able to force out Wink's cleanse. And Cold has been a player, we already hit on the experience that he has. Pretty much been around through every meta. If you're going to be a top tier support, you know how to play Thresh. A nice death set that's coming out from him. Oh my goodness, a perfect moment to talk about Cold as he styles on Lucas. Get destroyed. Abel's in trouble though. He's traded by Wink. And Cold, oh, Cold wants a little bit more. Does he have the death sentence available? Surely. Wink has flash right now, so shouldn't be killable. Does dodge the Q. That was beautiful from Cold. I hope we get a replay of that combo. And also, luckily, right, the fact that uh, they were able to chase off Wink as well. Wink wasn't able to force in that wave. So typically, you'd be like, okay, that was an advantage for IG. They forced in the wave. Abel's going to lose some EXP and gold. But Abel's going to get back to lane, as we see on the minimap, in time to not lose out on anything. Yeah, he'll be able to get there and grab that wave for himself. And that's incredibly important on Aphelios when you are so item-reliant. It does take a while to to get yourself into the game so important that he's able to be there not just for the cs but also for the xp when you're a champion that is uh you spike pretty hard off of that level six so not missing out on too much xp is going to be important 
You see this right, Dirk picked up by Wink, whereas it was the boots for Abel. So he's going to rely on his teammates a little bit. Flash for the death sentence from Cold as Aki sets the play up, but can't quite finish Lucas off with Shun in the picture. And the other thing is, right, we now pan back to mid lane. Rookies had pushed the whole time, but you look at uh, the state of Cream, where no mana, already half HP. Rookie even doing a good oh, job no. to keep him here longer. So going to force him in a really awkward position where it's like, hey, you can recall, but you're going to lose out on EXP or you're going to stay here and I'm going to be able to continuously bully you out and, and make it hard for you to be able to catch up in CS because look at the CS discrepancy already. 53 yeah. to what's probably going to be around, you know, 35 if if he's able to perfectly get the rest. So Rookie going to hover around the bottom side of the map. Also, we see Shun hovering. So this gives pressure for Wink and Lucas because Abel and Cold have to respect. A bunch of bulls, we get to play. And he's in trouble, going for the tower dive here with Aki on towards Nane. He's just absolutely mauled by the pair of bears. Cold trying to get a lantern out to Abel, who's like, actually, buddy, I think I think I'm gonna do the tower. You can you can have your lantern, you can be over there. But Abel realizes he's up a creek without a paddle, because there's four of them. Where can you go? Yeah, nice uh trade in response by IG, right? Uh, OMG's bot lane knew Shun and Rookie were hovering around, right? Rook, what, Rookie wasn't showing on mid wave. Kareem was just pushing that one under turret for free, but weren't able to get away in time. They they did realize that they tried to go for that lantern play, but overall, IG were too fast on pulling the trigger to allow OMG to get away. And it's not only going to give them more kills, but also will turn into this Infernal Drake. All right, Drake goes the way of IG. So far, so good for them. Let's take another look. Cold still level three at this point, and he's getting altered onto. It's not a pretty situation. And Abel's like, all right, well, he, he chose to stay under the tower. It, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Feels like there's two bad decisions available to you. I mean, there's there's really no decisions, right? You, you can't run up now. Your Thresh is already dead. Uh, other members are already there. You, you aren't even really able to try to clear out the wave fast with your early Aphelios. You only have boots, so... IG just being able to take him down, and we're going to come back out onto the map, and we see that Aki uh, clearing his bottom side camps while Cold and Abel doing a nice job of controlling vision around bottom side river. This was something we touched on in game one, that OMG have done a, a pretty good job of controlling vision around the map, and it seemed like IG were almost always walking into fog of war in that first game, or not realizing that OMG could have been in certain brushes or certain places because of how good OMG's vision control was. Yeah, so far it, it is uh, IG that seemed to be leading in that regard at very least, but Nani getting dived early on does mean that he's down pretty heavily in CS. He's going to be a bit down in items as well with the Bramble Vest coming through from New as well as a Phage. It's going to be IG starting themselves off a Herald rookie with infinite priority in this mid lane. He's able to just crash every single wave and move over. And Kareem really feeling the pressure. After last game as well, after how one-sided this mid lane matchup was, it was good to see Rookie having a really good performance and being able to show that he's still the powerhouse in the laning phase that we all know him for. Yeah, he's kept consistent control. Now that he has that blue buff as well, he's going to be able to keep this push up. Shun getting off the recall. He does have the Rift Herald now. Has his bottom camps up. You expect him to come out and start clearing these. And then it's just a matter of time before IG are able to break down that bottom turret. And then Lucas and Wink will have more freedom to move around the map and start using those CC tools that they provide to, you know, find picks around mid or, or then break open the top turret. Yeah, that would be the question. Just where to IG go in this early game to make things happen? Because it does feel like the, the script is flipped a little, right? where much more of the early game power is on the side of IG this time around, whereas game number one, it was all about OMG in the early game and IG trying to scale. So I like the way that IG have changed things up coming into game two and basically said, look, we didn't like the way the pacing went in game number one. We didn't like the way that we lost the early game in game number one. So this time around, let's have a little bit of power on this roster. OMG having the opposite side of that script, but important to mention, the big advantage or the big the big strength, I guess, we saw from OMG in game number one was the coordination and the synergy. And it does feel like they have this composition that's going to be all about trying to protect Abel and allow Kareem to have some freedom in these fights. So it's going to be a test for this roster on whether they can make that happen against IG with such potent all-in. The big thing is that they're setting Abel behind, right? Because... 
The win condition for OMG was you feel good about when IG are running into you, very low range composition, Rise as well, very low range mage. Ophelos can just burst all these guys out, but they've really done a good job of shutting him out there, once again zoning him off the wave to where their bot lane just went for a recall. They're going to get more gold onto Wink, so... If Abel is, isn't that strong, it doesn't really matter if the members of IG are running into you. They're going to be durable enough. They're going to have enough damage to take out your front line or even get on the back line with the Diana and the Renekton first and burst them out. Oh, flash in from OMG. Rookie's in triple cold. It's beautiful to see. Kareem gets himself his first kill of the game. It'll be a couple of plates as well on top of it. And it's a beautiful roam from Cold. It's a beautiful gank from Aki. Cold's such an interesting player because in 2020, definitely did not have the best year, but in spring, he was one of the highlight players of this team. I think a lot of people were questioning how many, how much time he had left in him with how long he's been playing and how many games he played in LPL, but we're going to see here, Aki just going in for the flash stun. Flash has to come out from Rookie. Cold able to follow up with that death sentence perfectly allows for OMG to then pick up that kill. Oh, now towards the top side we go. It's going to be new in trouble. The, the lantern comes out, though. Cole keeps him safe for now. The jump forward from Shun, and maybe he's gone too deep on this one. Kazaki's here. There's a TP from Cream. Kazaki looks for a stun. We'll back away in the end. Nice answer, though, from OMG to stop the counter play from IG. Oh, did a good job, especially Cold once again. Play into the box. They aren't able to follow up. Cream's TP maybe being a bit premature. Abel might be dead. Oh no, this is not a 1v1 that Aphelios can win this early in the game. Rookie's going to chase him down with the phase rush. And here's Lucas. There's a little bit of a bonus. Walks away, but there's a cube from Wink. No matter where you go, there's just more IG members coming. Yeah, and that was very interesting coming out from Abel because, right, Rookie was showing on the wave. He knows he's there. He still walks forward. Maybe he could have gotten away if it was just Rookie from the fact that he does have flash and cleanse up, but Rookie also still has the realm warp. So very questionable uh, choice to catch side lane waves coming out from Abel. This will turn into a, a Drake for the side of IG. I also think another layer of that plays the fact that Cream kind of wasted his TP towards the top side, even though New was already under into the safety of his turret. And the, the TP placement didn't really make sense for you to be able to follow up on those potential kills either. So just overall yeah. wasted summoner spell coming from Cream, where he wasn't able to follow up and potentially save Abel on that play either or catch the wave mid that they ended up losing. Does feel like maybe OMG's early macro is starting to feel a little bit exploitable. Uh, and certainly the bot lane are feeling a little killable. Um, well, but we'll see if that continues across the game. Won't we, Mr. Lyric? As uh, one and three, not the prettiest scoreline. It has to be said. From an AD carry that, you know, he's been around in the Chinese esports scene for a good old while at this point. And we're hoping to have a big split from him as he re enters the LPL. This kind of performance not really ticking those boxes. No, definitely not. And, you know, to be fair, again, a lot of that goes down to where IG was putting their pressure and how they were utilizing it uh, early on because. With the fact that their mid lane had such a big advantage, they consistently had mid lane push. They were always able to hover. We even saw moments where if IG weren't able to make plays towards spot, that Rookie and Shun were just shadowing. They were forcing Abel and Cold to play under their turret, despite the fact that they were doing pretty decently in the straight up 2v2 lane. So IG utilizing the map as a whole to find ways to continue to keep Abel down. That is desperate to stop him popping off because we all know what Aphelios can do if you get some kills, if you get a good chunk of gold into his pocket. But still just on the Noon Quiver. And just look at the item difference in the AD carries right now. There's a full Mythic plus an extra Coalfield Warhammer right there. Chain of Corruption onto Aki. They do a grand total of literally no damage uh, thanks to the shielding from the Lantern and from the Turtle Stance. Uh, so, even though I'm talking about how many items he has, Wink not doing that much right now, at least to Aki. But certainly, if he's able to get onto Abel or onto Cream, he'll be able to wail on those health effects. Abel, uh, Abel, I'm sorry, is finally able to back and pick up the Kraken Slayer. So, he's going to come in and, and start being able to dish out some semblance of damage. But IG right now are just doing a good job of keeping up... Uh, Kind of the the pressure that they have on the map right look at the bottom lane volley bear forced to answer wave look at the top lane that wave is crashing into turret nice death sentence but oh, it doesn't mean the anything falls! Shun! 
you absolute beast. Take some down. There's a kill there for Lucas as well. And suddenly, IG have complete control of the middle of the map. And in, in OMG find the death sentence, but that's not the death sentence that they won. Shun realizing, hey, these guys are kind of walking forward. Rocket belts in, follows up with a dash. The ultimate is there. Members instantly deleted. And this was a pick we were questioning of how IG would play it inside of this composition. They found the early lead, which sets up for it even more beautifully. But when OMG are, are setting up for these angles and Shun with, the, with the, the, the killer instinct, able to just see the play and go in, leads to another objective for IG and a massive gold lead. 4K, they're also going to get a Herald. Rookie's taking a turret right now. Mm -hmm. This should be a game that IG should be able to bring across the finish line. But at the same time, we have uh, their series against EDG very fresh in our memory. We're going to get a replay here. He finds the hook onto Lucas, but it just sets up for him to go in. Full combo comes out. Leona even able to pair along uh, right side with him, right? He was the one who got hooked. Just says, hey, you hooked me. I'll go in as well. Damage and CC layered. Bam, OMG. Not on track to beat IG for the first time in, you know, 1,800 and however so odd many days <laughs> I said earlier. There was a lot of days. There was a lot of days. Uh, one thing I will say as well, really unfortunate fight for Abel. Nene, uh, you've gone a little bit deep on this one, my friend. We'll have a second E available, but even with his ultimate, he's going to go down. That should be a bot lane tower taken by OMG here. And I, I just want to mention that Abel did have to flash. He tried to flash away from Shun during that play. The Moonfall brought him back in. So next time around, if Shun gets that Crescent Strike on towards Abel, he will be very vulnerable to a, a similar repeat play. Abel stepping up, trying to defend against this tower, but it's just not going to happen with Wink there on the lethality. There's the Moonfall we were talking about. Good God, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, he's just able to go in, and oh, oh my. my god, Cream deleted too. Members of OMG are there on the flank, but now not able to do anything. And this is already going to be an inhibitor for the side of IG at 17 minutes. And you know what? IG have been playing a bit slower this split. They've changed their style a little bit, and it's not been working out. And IG go, you know what? Never mind. We're changing it back. We're going for early aggression. We're going for skirmishes, and we're going for fast wins in goes new to try and save the day here we'll be able to clear the minion wave and it might just be enough to stop ig ending the game looking for a pick as they roam up away they'll go to the drake instead and get themselves soul point i mean still right this is going to be what a 23 minute 24 minute soul for them they're they're, they're so far ahead right this is only soul point but theoretically you'd expect they should be able to take the next drake as well they have a 5k gold advantage they have the ability to win in sides. They have the ability to win in team fights right now. They've done a, a great job of finding these picks in the mid game with members like Abel earlier on walking too far forward. But at this point, with how much distance Shun can cover between Flash, Rocket Belt, E, uh, you know, not, not even under your turret is walking too far forward at this point and just instantly goes down. No Flash available. Can't get out of there. Cream. Coming in with the Everfrost for some reason, even even after his AD carry dies, just get hit by the Chain of Corruption and, you know, goes down. Yeah. After his Game 1 performance, I think we can uh, give a little bit of a pass for, for some bad games from a rookie player. Yeah, to be fair as well, I didn't expect him to get one shot quite like that. I thought things True. would be on cooldown. I thought that there would be some kind of repercussion for the fact that IG just literally one-shot someone else, but apparently not. He could also be one-shot, so... Uh, bit unfortunate this second game from omg this feels like ig are just completely in control as cold desperate to get some kind of vision and he's playing well mechanically but it's a bit of an adc diff which is nice to see from wink right it's nice to see wink have a good game where he's the one that's leading in that bottom lane he's the one that has the advantage they are still just about even in cs which honestly feels like a bit of a testament towards abel even though he's one of five being able to stay even in CS in this game when it's gone this badly and you've been this hard focused feels like somewhat of an achievement. Uh, definitely. I mean, they've they've continued to go with ma uh, lane states where they are funneling farm onto him. They realize he is their carry, but this this is one of the dynamics of IG. This split, in my opinion, where it's like, hey, they can look at the enemy comp and realize how we should play out uh, in game to try to try to win the game. We even saw that in game one, right? Sure, they ended up losing, but midway through the game where they started looking for those flank uh looking for those flank wards and looking for members behind them so it's nice to see coming out from ig omg with 
full members here you'd expect IG not going to be able to find anything, but IG are incredibly strong with their large item advantages. Yeah, desperately trying to sync up the waves. It's not quite going to synchronize perfectly, but two supers in the base and a realm warp onto the Baron. This is the kind of creative realm warp that we were talking about. Baron is just going to get annihilated. Lethality virus, not the fastest, but they do have a rise here. They do have a Diana. Here we go. Flashing from Shun, but it's too late, and it means he'll go down as well. I mean, Aki, not Shun, obviously. But it is the Baron <laughs> taken by IG. And that's surely the final nail in the coffin. They'll reset. They'll close this one out. I mean, that's the thing, right? A Aki having to go for the 50-50 play. There there's really nothing else you can do here. The game, it it's either bleed out slowly, tr try to defend, try to hold on to where our fellows can pick up another two items. But IG are going to get soul in, in what's going to be two minutes. Or you're going to have to fight them there anyway. Where if you take that fight, they should theoretically win. Unless they just run into you. So... I like the... I mean, even if they just run into you, honestly. I'm not sure that <laughs> they, they have they the are... damage to kill anyone. <laughs> they are far enough ahead to where you're right. IG, even if they run in one by run, right? One by one. Shun jumps in. He might be able to just take out two members yeah. instantly with the amount of burst he has in this kit. So. I actually think one, one versus five, I, I actually think the odds are in Shun's favor of winning that fight at this point in the game. <laughs> with, with what he did to Abel earlier on, like... Flash can't save you now, Abel. There is no redemption. IG, for now, just going to use their Baron to push in this uh, bottom lane turret. They do have an uh, inhibitor in mid, so they will have super minions coming in. So can wait out that next wave. It will. It looks like it should be able to hit at a similar time. And then they should be able to whittle this one down with all the poke coming out from the Varus. I love how aggressive Rookie is. There's not many Rice players that have walked underneath the tower without a minion wave there. Quite that readily. Moonlight Vigil does literally nothing to the members of IG as they just continue the siege. Their super's pushing in the mid lane. The Nexus turrets are getting hurt as the health bars are getting prodded down on OMG. Lantern can't save you now as here we go with the Moonfall on the back line and everyone just gets railed by the Crescent Strike. Another double for Shun. And this game looked easy for IG after OMG dominate game one. Oh no, the Imp have respawned. Well... It just adds a little bit of comedy to the end of the game. It's still an easy IG win. It hasn't changed anything. But IG, in 22 minutes and 30 seconds, they don't even need the Ocean Soul in 20 seconds time because this one is a dub. Yeah, nice, nice bounce back coming out from IG this game, right? We saw them change their draft completely. They went with the Varus. They went with uh, Shun being on a carry champion, and especially when Shun has been one of the most promising players on this roster. It's nice to see him to be able to take a massive damage roll. They realized the focal point of OMG's composition. They shut down that win condition early on, so even if OMG wanted to come back into the game, it would have taken, you know, 10, maybe 15 more minutes for him to really be able to come online. And IG would still be at an item advantage over you at that point, so there would even be no guarantees there, so... IG adapting. I really like this look when we have Wink on the Varus. I think maybe even going for a JDG style of him picking up the Jin, something like the Ezreal find as well. It seems like there, there's ways to play around this roster and find this identity. And even just a quick shout out to Nani, even though he didn't really do anything this game, the fact that he doesn't have to do anything, can just play that weak side role and like, like didn't give over free deaths, didn't, didn't do anything, that in itself adds a lot more dimensions to IG as well. So we saw IG bounce back. We saw OMG falter a little bit, but there were, were still some clean moments, I think, especially coming yeah. from Cole. A lot of cool death sentences, but in the end, it didn't mean anything when you had lane prio in mid, you had this aggressive jungler, you had bot lane doing well, and, you know, mm -hmm. that was the nail in the coffin for OMG. I will say, even though it was a valid point, it did sound kind of insulting that you're like applauding the fact that Nani didn't do anything this game. <laughs> it's uh, an amazing concept. I think that's a, I have to say. I think that's a win. He got no resources. <laughs> yeah, the enemy team focused him. And again, you hit on it earlier, right? There's a lot of top laners in the LPL that uh, just kind of know how to go too far forward when they shouldn't. And, you know, some would argue 2020, Shy was one of those players. So Nani coming in and playing that survive side role while IG were just like, hey, we'll win the rest of the map, man. You just uh, chill out in that top lane. Look, it's a mindset so it is a that will change lunch. your life. If you just accept that you cannot carry every single game of League of Legends, sometimes you've got to be carried. Your time in solo queue will be a lot easier. It's okay to go 0-0 zero, zero in lane so long as someone else on your team is popping off. That's exactly what Nani's doing because Shun 
took this one into his backpack. Abel did not have a fun time. Trying to play against the Diana that gets ahead as a Defelios, it, it's just impossible. There's just nothing you can do. They fell so far behind so quickly. You can see it in the gold graph that OMG never stood a chance in this game. I mean, are we starting to see a theme, Munchables? Uh, assassins are the way to win this series. Both times, Assassin's doing a great job of finding the enemy backline mm -hmm. and bursting them out before they're able to do anything. Both times, the Hyper Carry losing so far in this series. And yeah, it seems like for IG, they're going to continue to be a team like they were in Spring and like last year, where, you know, whether it's up against IG or OMG or so on and so forth, they're, they're always going to be able to be competitive with anyone. And then we're just going to get into the finer details of, you know, draft, execution, yeah. things along those lines where if they're able to pull out the w in the end well we'll see how uh how things are going to change up going into the last game i'd expect the teams to swap sides again and we'll see if all on the blue side will be able to do anything to change their fate and finally get a dub against ig for the first time in five years we'll have to wait and see in a few minutes